I mean, for some women, it takes one guy to have a baby. For me, it took five guys to have Xena. It took the reproductive endocrinologist, the, um, the doctor who did the egg retrieval, the doctor who did the embryo transfer, the embryologist, and Ryan. I mean, Ryan being the last person because I guess his part was probably really little. Come say hi. Come say hi to our friends. Come show them your book. Zina, you want to show them your book? This is, this is Zina's To the Moon and Back for you. You're, you're the partner, not the witness. I'm signing the consent forms. Okay, so let's see The idea of consent it. forms. What's next? I don't know, I signed one. How do you feel? Wow. <laughs> I think when you're like sitting in a chair, the area that has like the most like, yeah, exactly. That's exactly this? where you want to go. Yeah. Do you want to? I have an idea of what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm sure. There we go. Day four of the shots. How's the post future mama feeling? Bloated, huge, tired, all sorts of things. Good job. Good job. So we'll see you tomorrow for day five. These aren't even the bad ones. That's what all the stuff says. Like this is the easy way. Wait, wait till you get to the really bad ones. Okay, I'm gonna rub it. Okay, bye. Day five, Buster. Day five. So now we're on to the Cetra side. Day five and like a week to go. In my mind, I set myself up for multiple tries. There's no way that one try is gonna work. Multiple tries is what I'm gonna to have to go through. This means I would have to do another round of IVF because the chances of this working the first time are very, very slim. So I said, okay, let's, let's, let's do the fresh transfer. So I looked up at this MB, MB, MB page and I said, oh, please, please, please. I just looked at her and I said, please, please stick, stick, baby. And Zena stuck. That's our little embryo. That's the little one that could. It's not that good looking. Stop. We will call it blast assist. Well, you know, when the doctor told me that I had to do IVF, I had no idea about it. I didn't even know where to start, what kind of questions to ask, because I didn't know anything about it. What IVF does is it stimulates your ovaries for you to drop multiple eggs at once. So it puts your body in this, you know, you're trying to make a baby each month with one egg as far as you know, but this is trying to get as many as possible in one, one shot. Basically, you're like a little chicken. You're gonna, you're gonna pop the eggs out and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the eggs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some, some other stuff in there make a little omelet, bake the omelet for a little bit, and then put it back inside the chicken. That's what we're going to do right now. So basically, I'm a chicken. And the doctor will follow this whole process and then we'll say, okay, you're ready to retrieve, you know, X number of mature eggs. And then the same day that you retrieve your eggs, your husband or your partner, or whoever, your donor, gives us, uh, gives a sample and then they fertilize whatever mature eggs you have, and they render a certain number of um, embryos. As I was going through the process, I think I started to learn more about it. Uh, I had to take an IVF class. I had to read up on it. I had no idea what went into it. And even I was really, really private during the process, and I found out you know, during this time, how many women were actually really, really private about it. And even just sitting in the waiting room, 
I remember for my appointments, because you do multiple tests and multiple appointments, the people that I saw there, I, you kind of glance at each other and you wonder, you know, what they're there for or what, at what stage they're at. And everybody was pretty private and secretive about it. And I had never heard it before from, from somebody I knew at least. I never had the opportunity to be able to talk about it. I think my reaction to it was to be very private and to be very scared to open up about it. A lot of women struggle and they struggle in silence. And no matter how intellectually I could explain it to myself or explain it to somebody else, I was still quite embarrassed by it. Not because I thought that there was something wrong with me or that I was broken or something. I felt that it was such a sensitive, personal, private subject matter. And Amelia is aiming herself so that she can watch Southern Charm at the same exact time. Well, they're getting me through this. Puffer. Oh, okay. Come on. Here. Um, no. I didn't think that I was ever, that I was ever going to have to do it. So I never had much thought about it. So I always assume that you you're healthy, you take care of yourself. There's no history of infertility in your family. You get married, one day when you decide to have kids, you get drunk and you have a baby. <laughs> the store comes and they deliver a baby. I downplayed the whole thing and I didn't want it to be this big sad thing. I almost felt like I didn't want to get too much in my head about it. I didn't want to really think about what could go wrong. I wanted to go in, do what the doctors told me, and then whatever was going to happen was going to happen, and I would think about it at another time. Damn, I always get nervous before we go. Why do you get nervous before we go? Because like, for a split second, you're like, I hope everything's okay, I hope everything's okay, I hope she's still in there. I hope like her, all her, her body parts are there. So, so you're I excited, but you're nervous. just nervous? Yeah, I always get nervous just before. I wanted to just approach it like a job almost, you know? I'm gonna do what they tell me and then I'll know when I've arrived. You know, I'll know when that, when that moment comes and when I can actually think about the process or what what goes into it. And I didn't want to make I didn't want to go through it feeling sorry for myself. I didn't want to feel sad. I didn't want to get down on myself about it. But I did feel reluctant to tell my parents. My mom cried, but now she cries every second she gets. She's she just gets. like kissing your stomach. Yeah, yeah, but boo. The culture is that you know you're you're Greek and you have multiple babies and you can have them with ease and that's just the way we are. And you, I had never heard from my family. You know, it was it's a long joke, long running joke with my mom that it, she the the one time she wasn't protecting herself, she got pregnant each time and. Um, I remember doing the shots for the first time and my mom started to cry. And I didn't even cry, but she cried watching me do these shots. I don't think she had ever thought that I was actually struggling. I don't think she ever thought that it was, an, it was going to ever be an issue. And I had been pretty relaxed you know, over the two years that we were trying and sort of brushed it off that, you know, yeah, I'm not ready. I'm not really ready for a baby. And I, now in retrospect, after going through this process, I notice a lot of women do that, where they say, no, no, you know, they're, they're not in a rush or, um, but I do think that a lot of women struggle and they struggle in silence, you know, because when you try naturally, you try and every month it's a heartbreak, you know, when you're, you try multiple times and, you know, in the beginning I, I, you know, went through it and just said, oh, it's not a big deal. But every time you, 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 it hurts. It hurts every month that you're not pregnant. And then as the time goes by, you start to get more nervous and 
you think of the worst, the worst case scenarios. And it starts to eat away a little bit at your relationship because you're stressed and your partner's stressed and the two of you deal with stress in a completely different way. And you know, the, the, the weeks turn into months and the months turn into years and you have no sign of it ever happening. What did I say? It's not good. What happened? So, 10 eggs, which only is 10? low, and then only five fertilized, which means that probably by the time they mature, it'll be less. When you go through IVF, and then you have the numbers that, you're, that they're reading to you, and they're not what you expected, and your odds are, they start diminishing even more and more and more because you go in through, I went into IVF with such a positive and optimistic attitude because I felt that for the first time ever, I, I, was, I had in an odd way control over the situation. You have no control over it, but I felt like I was working hard towards something, towards a goal and I was doing everything possible I could, even throwing in the kitchen sink to have this baby. It's this constant feeling of up and down. Um, but when I started it, and I was doing, you know, doing the hormones, uh, they were painful, the ones that I did in my stomach, but at the same time, I felt like I could muscle through them. I felt like I could handle it. And there are many times that I was laughing about it and it was fun and it was, you know, I know that sounds crazy, but it was, it was this fun moment between me and Ryan that we could do together, you know? We were making a baby together in this way. Um, towards the end, I think, before my transfer, no, before my before I did the, the retrieval, the egg retrieval, I was very tired and I felt physical pain and your bloat and you're heavy and I had just started a new job and I couldn't function. It really affected the way I, you know, the way my brain worked. I just wasn't as sharp. Um, I did feel emotional, but I didn't allow myself to break down because I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. I didn't want to feel sorry for myself and I didn't want to cry and lose control and you know I very much wanted to just muscle through it. Ryan kept saying just take just take a pregnancy test and even at the hospital they said don't don't take a, a pregnancy test because you know it might not be accurate because with the hormones you're taking it might not pick up on what you want to pick up on and I said okay I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna do the test and we were sitting here in the living room and I said I'm gonna go into the bathroom and I'm just gonna do it. She doesn't know I'm recording this. But there's the pregnancy thing. I didn't want to freak her out. So I told her to go get the directions. <sighs> Why are you crying, Pupper? Because maybe it worked! Maybe it did work! Maybe it did work! Please, 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 just stick! Just stick! Just stick! Show me, what did it say? What did it say? What did it say? I was recording that the whole time, by the way. Oh. Oh man, expansion with a baby, new shirts. After I opened up about IVF, I started to talk to all these women who are going through it. And it has opened up this amazing conversation and these amazing friendships, if you will, with all these women and I follow their journeys. And they inspired me so much to write a, a little children's book you know, in honor of the struggle to have a baby. And I wrote a children's book for baby Zena. This is, my, this is, this is Zena's book. 
I hope it starts a conversation with, you know, between a parent and their miracle baby. And I want them, all these miracle babies, to know how much they were loved and how much they were wanted. Um, so much so that we would go through it all over again just to have them. It's available for pre-sale now, but it comes out March 24th, and I have details below on To the Moon and Back for you. I hope you enjoy it.